Hey folks, so uh, today I'm going to shoot a little bit of a different video. I'm going to do what I call a take it apart video. So I've had just a stupid number of failures of these Ryobi 40 volt uh, batteries and chargers and I've been really curious what's inside. So today we're going to take it apart and figure out what's inside. So I've got my, um, so one of the first things you notice when you start looking at, well, how do I get inside this thing is that they have used security bits. And well, it just so happens that I have a set of security bit drivers. So once I can figure out how to get these out, I will see which one fits. Bullseye. Lucky guess. So let's see what's inside. So I'm going to take the screws out of the bottom. I'm going to do the charger first. Um, I've had two of these batteries go bad on me and each time Home Depot wants to replace the charger and the battery. You know, it's beyond me. The, the, the charger is probably not what went bad, but I'm always fascinated by taking apart stuff like this to see how it's engineered and what they're doing. This is pretty clever. So what you've got in here is the screws that hold it together also are the PCB mount. That's a really clever design. And then um, it's a single circuit board and one of the pins inside is disconnected. So it looks like terminal two just has no connection on the inside on this charger. So let's go ahead and pull these off. Oh, looks like we're gonna have to use scissors to pull them off. See what we got here. So there is a transformer with um, a single sided circuit board. I can't imagine what cost you save with a single sided circuit board. And there is a heat sink on, I don't know what that is probably some kind of a tran power transistor. And then you got another step down coil here with a fuse soldered in. That's a really intelligent move. Fuse looks good. Bunch of diodes. Um, an LED, a some kind of strange resistor. Another, hmm. So there's nothing obviously burned out here. This is a really, really simple um, charger design. I mean, there's just no, um, no significant intelligence here. It's interesting, they look like they're using polyurethane on their leads to um, keep corrosion out. That's clever. And then they zip tie this transformer in. So I guess that that's been a point of failure in the past. And um, again, this is the kind of stuff that's interesting when you take these apart. Um, so it looks like essentially the power comes in here and it comes through here. You've got a capacitor, a fuse, and um, probably a, um, self-resetting fuse here. You've got a um, couple of diodes, or no, a couple of small resistors on the bottom that are surface mount. And then you've got, it's, it's interesting, you use a combination of through hole and surface mount components, but then there's a, um, which looks like a relay, but this can't be relay. Then there's a step down transformer and um, there's four diodes that more than likely um, form a bridge rectifier followed by a large capacitor. And then this is probably a transistor that's being used um, for um, uh, switching power supply.
What I don't see is any sort of microcontroller that would indicate um, any kind of intelligence. So this is probably just doing level shifting. So it charges until it gets to a certain level and then it kicks itself off. Um, looks like they might be stepping down and then stepping back up. Oh wait, here's the microcontrollers. Their surface mount on the bottom. Yeah, so it is microcontroller and it's it's driven on this side. So, but there's nothing that obviously looks burned out on this. So, um, let me go get a magnifying glass. We'll see. What so, I've got a magnifying glass and a um, uh, an LED flashlight, and I often find the the flashlight helps. Yeah, I can't tell what this is. It's nothing I recognize. I don't recognize the other chip either. So I'm sure I could look them up, but um, you know, there's nothing obviously burned out on this. So um, I don't think the problem's with the charger. Although it is fascinating to take it apart and see how it looks and what's inside. Let's set this off to the side. Now let's take apart the lithium ion battery. So I have to say before I do this, you shouldn't do this at home unless you know what you're doing, and then you maybe you still shouldn't do it because lithium batteries can be bad. They can catch on fire. Uh, looks like they might be using a slightly different size security screw. Let's see. Yep, next size down. And you can get these security um, bits on Amazon for five or six bucks. And I will be very interested to see what has actually failed in this battery pack. Because this happens a lot. Ryobi has an ongoing quality control problem with their battery packs. And it's actually why I stopped using their tools. I like their tools. I thought they were good. But the batteries just don't last. So, if you've ever been curious what was on the inside of one of these things, here we are. Let's see. Apparently those are all security screws. So here we have a lithium ion battery pack. And I'll let you guys see what it is. So here are your actual lithium ion cells, and then here's all the circuitry. And I'm gonna figure, see if I can figure out what these do. I need a different drill bit. All right, so I'm gonna get this circuit board out of the way, because I don't see any other way to do it. So the indicator on the end is this little thing. I guess you push it and it, it uses voltage to determine where the cell is. Um, it's cute, it's a little four LED relay, single layer board, you know, they certainly aren't spending any money on these things, they don't have to. So let's go ahead and take this board off and see what's going on in here. I need something smaller than that. Um, all right, let me go look for a screwdriver. I'm also gonna start a second camera so you guys can see what I'm actually doing here. So, um, got some Harbor Freight screwdrivers. I'm going to 
trying to do is get the circuit board off. I suspect the circuit board is actually the cause of failure, but I can't. I don't see anything that's obviously burned out at this point. There is a fuse built into this thing here, and then it looks like there's something going on here, and then that looks like another fuse. So they've really gone out of their way to build some safety in. Ah, looks like we've got a bad capacitor right here. See this crap on this capacitor? Let's go ahead and take it apart and see what's going on. I'm looking to see if I've missed a screw somewhere before I start prying. I suspect this is glued in here. not glued it's definitely in here with something I was really hoping to be able to get this apart so I could see what the cause of failure is there we go I suspect this is a fatal maneuver for this pack but you know this packs already dead anyway just trying not to have it blow up on me Well, if it wasn't dead before, it is now. I don't smell anything burned. It's a real cheap PCB because the traces are actually peeling up on me. Man, you can't make these things any cheaper than this. It is a two-layer PCB, so it's an upgrade from some of their other stuff. She was getting the getting something in here to uh, pry on it with. There we go. The whole thing just rides on here. All right, so here's the rest of it.
Be right back. All right, so I want to get my multimeter because I want to be able to test this. Well, first, I need to see if I can figure out how to get these out. I bet these are screwed in from up here. guess is there's screws hiding under here. The only way to find out is to peel this back and see. Bingo! Two screws. Even smaller. Fortunately, my security bit set has this bit too. And we've got a couple more screws here, so we'll switch back to the larger bit and extract those. I want to take the battery packs apart. I think the battery packs are 20, 20 volt piece, and I don't think there's anything wrong with the battery packs. Actually, kind of a nice battery pack assembly, and at least one of these should be salvageable. So now comes the fun part. We're going to start testing the voltage on these. So that one's one. So there's three quarters of a volt across the entire pack. That's not good. Link, link. You know what, these are gonna have to come out of this. in these and I want to try to do this without damaging the cells.
obviously this is not designed to be taken apart. glued in. If they're not glued in, they're certainly pressed in. Yeah. Mm. So this should be the negative side. I should be able to at least read one of these cells. So I still don't know why this died, but there's no real visual indicators. Nothing. Nothing. I think it's a. I think it's an electronics failure. So let's see what we got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So these should be. 4 volts a piece. Well, that's the only way to get 40 volts out of this thing. Did it really say 40 volts? Sure did. And they look to be serial numbered batteries. That's impressive. But there's no battery leakage. There's no no obvious signs of failure here. Um, I don't think the failure is within the battery pack. I, I unfortunately I can't get these apart. I really hate to throw away um, these cells because they're really interesting. But it um, is clearly maybe these are welded together. Let's see if this will pry off. Oh yeah, these are welded in. So that's about as far as I can get it. So you've got uh, 10 cells inside here that make up the battery pack for this uh, lithium ion battery. And uh, you know, if you've ever been curious what's inside one of these batteries, well, there you have it. So it's always kind of interesting to take apart um, dead stuff and see how they put it together. And um, you know, again, I this is a fairly fascinating um, assembly. You know, there's a fiberglass insulator there and it just goes together like this and then this is the battery pack and then it's held in with long screws. So what I'll do at this point is um, recycle the pieces that are recyclable so the plastics can obviously go in the recycle bin and the electronics can go in the trash. So it's not completely a futile exercise. Um, I'll save a little bit of stuff from going into the landfill, but I have no idea why it died. Um, the only thing I can think of is these must be so cheap for them that they don't even bother. They just send out a new one. And, um, this is made in, 2000, in May of 2015. And, uh, you know, I have multiple chargers, so we did try the battery on the charger. I, I really think the failure is in this circuit board, and um, if I had to guess, I'd say it's either capacitor failed or, um, yeah, I, I think it's a capacitor failure. Um, this capacitor has a little bit of junk next to it. Yep. So I think 
this 22 microfarad capacitor is actually the part that went bad. And I don't think I have an easy way to test that. Yeah, see there's junk here. And this, this little junk that I'm scraping off with my fingernail is probably the magic that was inside that capacitor and it probably, um, something's overloading the capacitor and caused it to fail. So there's a second capacitor and this one's all clean. So I think each battery pack charges independently and um, I think this is actually the cause of failure. C25. A fucking five cent capacitor. So, um, probably if they would either increase the quality of their capacitor or bump up the value to say 25 microfarads, um, this problem would go away. So, if this happens again, I may, um, well, see, the problem is I can't get this out to get it apart. To replace this because otherwise I think this is replaceable but they're saying they basically solder um, this in place and that makes it impossible to get out what are they soldering to oh there's little tabs that stick out of these so anyway thanks for watching I hope you found this interesting and have a great day always dispose of this kind of stuff safely don't throw it in the fire because it could explode